In this module, we'll look at adding our own custom streaming analytics. Now in the quick start, we already had a very basic version of this, sometimes also known as a last value cache. And as the name suggests, it's a process which stores only the last value for a particular key in a table. And for us, that was the SIM key. Now, like the RDB, this last value cache subscribes to the ticker plan for updates, but rather than merely adding a new row in its own tables each time it receives an update, it adds a received data into a keyed table, overriding the previous value for that key. Now in a finance setting, this might allow a client process to see the last trade for each symbol much quicker than connecting to the RDB and doing a select statement to get this information, for example. And while a select statement might be performing pretty well at the beginning of the day, you can imagine as your data volume increases throughout the day, performance can degrade when you're running that select statement and giving users an an inconsistent experience. So this process helps to minimize the load and create a consistent return experience by acting in this kind of continuous fashion. Now, other more complicated processes can have less defined names, such as a real-time engine or complex event processor. These are a further abstraction of a real-time subscriber process, basically doing more advanced calculations typically on the incoming data. And it's ra rather than just inserting or upserting these key tables, you're actually doing some business logic in there. Now, typical behavior for a CEP might be when it receives data, it calculates some stats on the fly and updates a new stats table. So that way, if a client wants to get stats about a specific table or data, they don't have to calculate them each time from the raw data. It's sitting there ready to be queried and as it's been done incrementally by the CEP, as and when data comes in, meaning their query time is a lot faster. So let's have a look at how we can add our own stats table. Now I've already prepared this in a file called cep.q and in here we have logic that first of all does similar things like before, opens a handle to our ticker plan process and then it's initializing some empty stats table. So you should see the table notation here is looking similar to what we've seen for our schema file when we were defining empty tables. And notice that the SIM column for both is actually inside the square brackets. And you might remember from that previous module that I said, whenever your columns are listed inside those square brackets, inside table notation, that means your table is keyed on that column. Next, we have functions calculating the metrics from the trade table. So we have this intermediate table called .cep.tradestats, and we're getting the max price and the min price grouped by SIM from our table. Then we're using a left join here to set this table called stats to have the values of the stats from the trade table and the stats from the quote table. Now we're doing the exact same thing on the quote table in the next section below, except we're calculating um, max bid price and min ask price this time. And again, saving that to the stats table. So whether an update for trade comes in or an update for quote, that stats table will be updated accordingly. And at the end, then we need to define UPD and it's gonna basically subscribe to both tables. So previously we would have just set it to be insert. So just inserting new data to a table. But now we're saying if the trade record comes in, we wanna run this update trade function. If a quote rec record comes in, we wanna run the update quote table. And then we're, we have our subscription with our handle on the last line like we had before. Okay, let's launch this and see what happens. So we will need a new process. So I've just opened a new terminal to do that and we can simply run Q and tick where the file is at cp.q. Now let's have a look at our stats table. We can see we now have records for all of our symbols and we can see we didn't yet get one for Apple. I presume now after those seconds have passed, yes, we can see now the prices for the quote table had just come in a bit later than the others. And if we run this a few more times, you'll see that the max price um, has updated for some of the records here and min price and for the rest of the columns as well. So our table isn't our table count isn't getting any bigger. We're not adding any new rows. We're just updating that table in real time. So hopefully you can see how this functionality really saves a user from rerunning their calculations every time from the raw data. Instead, this is done incrementally by the CEP process as new data arrives. So quite a common problem is users fetching vast amounts of raw data to calculate something that could be much better done once, incrementally updated, and then made available to all interested downstream clients and, and 
processes. And in fact, a lot of production systems will log user queries, look for frequently ran ones and ones that taking are taking a lot of time and then they'll push this logic down into the CEP process. There's some common examples of this on finance would be having things like the open high low close captured, also the VWAP volume weighted average price. Also doing things like calculating your real time trades with the latest quote value known as the as of quote value. And that uses the as of join function in KDB, which is a really powerful time series join. And this as of join was actually added to the language to solve this specific problem, joining together trades and quote tables together in such a way for that. So that for each trade, you're getting the prevailing quote as of the time of that trade. So there's a great white paper which has that logic built out inside it. So I will link that as well below for you to have a look at. This functionality is also desirable outside of finance. So say you're capturing sensors data for a manufacturing process. If you wanted to keep a tally of what the peak temperature for a specific sem sensor is throughout the day, for example. So say your first sensor comes in and it's 100 degrees and the second sensor is 50. You would hold in cache the memory of that peak temperature of 100 degrees until something higher comes in. And then you can use that to evaluate if you're going over or below a certain threshold, for example. So just scratch the surface of the kind of logic that can be applied in these real time subscribers or these CEP processes. But hopefully it's given you an idea of what you could build on your own. That's it for this module on adding real time subscribers to your KDB architecture. Try the quiz to test your knowledge before moving on to the rest of the modules.